If you want to support Slopes Game Room, then please click the links that you see in the top comments. There are plenty of games based on boring jobs that at first, you may think to yourself, what? Who the hell wants to play a game where you're a bloody paper boy? That is until you play it. Yep, awesome game. Same goes for stressed out chefs, barmen, forklift drivers, taxi drivers, farmers, window cleaners, and of course, passport inspection officers. Just because they may sound like boring jobs to some people out there, I think we can all agree that some of the most confusing game concepts ever actually turn out to be some of the very best games going. But of course, we don't want to give you that because today I want to talk about 10 video games you've probably never heard of that make you want to just simply put it down and end up calling a sickie. And to make it even more obscure, I'm focusing this video entirely on the European home computer scene of the 1980s and 1990s, which ultimately eliminates United Independent Entertainment games from the list because, well, that would have just been way too easy. Yes, this is 10 of the most standard jobs out there that you will be surprised ever got the green light to be turned into 10 rather stupid video games. Welcome to Slopes Game Room. Number 10. Yeah, 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 Advanced Lawnmower Simulator should most definitely be a lot higher on the list, but considering this whole thing is easily the most well known on the list, I'm putting it in at number 10, you know, simply just to get it out of the way. So, Advanced Lawnmower Simulator. This is a powerful and accurate lawnmower simulation, choose from several different machines and go get that grass. So you choose one of those six lawnmowers, however if you choose anything from the Campari Grassmaster to the Flymo Grass Shoom, then you're out of luck. I'm sorry, I'm afraid that the Campari Grassmaster, the Daft turf o -Matic, the Acme Mega Cut 3000, the Acme Lawn Ace and the Flymo Grass Shoom are broken at the moment. Which only leaves number 6. The Patio Sprintet is working well. Pressing M engages the motor, releasing M disengages it, press any key to start. This is the entire game guys. You hold down M to mow and release M to stop for, um, I don't know, a cup of tea or something. So whilst the guy's ginormous garden gets cut up, I'm going to explain why this game was made. And not only that, why the game got such a legendary score of 9 out of 10 by Duncan McDonald of Your Sinclair magazine, coming as far as giving it the prestigious Your Sinclair Mega Game Award. Well, it's because Duncan McDonald from Your Sinclair actually made it himself. The game was never sold in the shops, but instead it was given away on compilation cassettes from the front of that very magazine. In other words, the whole thing was one massive troll move by Your Sinclair magazine. Well moan, well done, you've earned yourself a corned beef sandwich. And that is the game, it just loops from here on out. Like I said, the whole thing was a hoax and for you clever internet hackers that like this sort of thing, I highly suggest you go and check out in date order all of the letters that came in after this game was reviewed in Sinclair magazine, as all of them continued the trolling for months and months, claiming that the game was underscored and that it was stolen by someone else. This sort of stuff is just brilliant to look through and will definitely help anyone going through a bit of a rough patch. That's for sure. Number 9 Okay, it's time to get seriously weird now. We have all played plenty of business simulators, right? You know, where you need to buy stock, work out what you've got and then resell it. Yeah, looking through boring games based on boring jobs for old home computers. This sort of thing could have taken up the whole list. Honestly, when done right, I've always quite enjoyed these sort of games with my earliest memory most likely found in the back end of Theme Park. Anyway, with plenty of examples in gaming on this, I think you'll be hard pushed to find any more bizarre as Hamsters and Folle, aka Hamsters in Madness. Ever wanted to own your own hamster breeding shop? 
Well, now you can in this game. That is if you can speak French or if you're like me and you painstakingly type in what you see into Google Translate so you can actually bloody get these little critters to shag, which eventually I discovered is actually no more exciting than watching a number go up. <laughs> So in this game made for kids between the ages of 10 to 15, you need to make sure you have enough food to feed each hamster. That's one kg of food each month. Get the right amount of cages as each cage can only hold 20 comfortably and your shop can hold no more than 1,000 hamsters in total. Because otherwise, and I quote from the game's manual, they may suffocate or die of disease. Obviously, the game was bloody hard to fully understand, being French and all, but through trial and error, I quickly realised that as basic of an idea of this game may be, it's actually pretty bloody complicated, especially when you start buying more shops in an attempt to grow your hamster empire. Number 8 It's a me, a poster paster. <laughs> yes, poster paster is next up on our list. Ever fancied yourself as someone who wants to paste posters for a living? Not sure yet. Well, thankfully, if you owned a Commodore 64 back in the day, you could at least experience the pasting of posting with poster paster. Although I gotta say, I don't think poster pasters in the real world had to deal with little gremlins running and killing them by touching their shins. But, you know, apart from that, I'm sure it's pretty spot on. All in all, the game actually isn't too terrible. Old Mario here gets to throw wads of paint at these little things and the controls are... Well, they're okay. The whole way you need to move your poster paster right over to the right can take some getting used to and the way you need to move him into the exact right spot so you can pick up the right segment of the poster to paster can be quite annoying at first, but I gotta say, I actually didn't mind this one too much. I mean, the game isn't completable in my opinion. I mean, I suppose it technically is, but by the end of the game, that's stage seven in case you was wondering, it just starts to become so incredibly annoying that you won't want to complete it. But in those early stages, I mean, yeah, it was okay, I suppose. Number seven. Here we are with yet another ZX Spectrum game called Mad Nurse, a game where you play as a nurse in a maternity unit and your job is to stop the babies from killing themselves. Yep, just like all nurses in the maternity ward will confess, this game is exactly what it's like on the job. Babies that can't even lift their own heads are constantly escaping cots and you need to very quickly pick them up and then put them back in their cots before they accidentally take an overdose from eating medicine pots, accidentally electrocuting themselves from electrical outlets and of course, falling down elevator shafts. <laughs> yes, but you didn't realise it was that tough in the maternity ward, did you? I know, I know, but that's the world we live in, and the guys at Firebird Studios simply wanted to warn everybody of exactly what the life of a nurse was like. Jokes aside, the game actually ended up being fairly controversial upon its release, so much so that the head of the studio even refused to sell it. That was until new management came in with less of a moral compass and gave it a thumbs up. Sadly, however, several outlets actually refused to sell it based on the realistic nature of dying babies. <sighs> Some people simply just won't open their eyes, will they? Number six. It's Truck Simulator time, guys. Now, come on, I'm not going to obviously mention my beloved 18-wheeler game or any of the more recent truck simulators either. Nope, because this episode we are doing it old school style, remember? And because of that, I'm instead going to be bringing up Juggernaut. Now, for some of you driving a lorry may seem a rather stupid video game concept, even in this day and age. I'm talking about simulators rather than the arcade ones, of course. And to those people, I gotta say, I sort of agree. But then again, Juggernaut isn't exactly the best of its genre anyway, and you're soon gonna wanna play any of those new age simulators over this one. After you've decided what your lorry size is, obviously the bigger it is, the harder it is to control, you drive around aimlessly looking for a phone box, you stop near it, pause the game to call up and find out where the goods are that you need to collect, and then you go and pick them up. 
Why the hell you didn't find that out before you left is beyond me. Kids, if you're watching this back in the day before mobile phones, nobody was this stupid. Anyway, logic aside, you then continued to drive your almost impossible to control lorry to the destination which is easier said than done because as soon as you put it into second gear, it becomes even more unplayable. And even the slightest touch of anything green very quickly builds up your damage meter and before you know it, it's game over. Lorry destroyed. Game over. Number five. Oh, <laughs> would you look at him? Okay, so this is Wimsters for the ZX Spectrum, and this time we're moving from lorry simulation and having a bit more fun as a van driver. Now, guys, I'm only adding this one to the list as I remember it being one of the first games, if not the first game, I ever played on a ZX Spectrum back in the day. I only ever knew the one person that had one of these machines, and for the longest time, this was what I based the system upon. Whilst I show you what you actually do in the game, I want to explain the story behind this one, which is actually written in the game's manual. Apparently, Bill Webster here, the entrepreneur, had been counting up how many games his local software shop had, and after working out what they was worth, he asked his dad to borrow some money and start up his own delivery service. Day one arrived at the wholesale in my brand new van. Total bedlam. I even had to get my own stuff off the racks with a forklift and send it up to dispatch, where I could load it into the van. Those guys in dispatch are crazy. The stuff came down the delivery chute so fast I couldn't keep up. When I drove out, there was a litter of computer parts and cassette cases all over the floor. I hadn't left the warehouse and already I was losing money. The drive to my first drop was a nightmare. One of my competitors beat me out of the wholesaler gates and I couldn't get past him. What made it worse, the idiot left his back doors open and I had to dodge a steady shower of debris as it came tumbling out. Didn't do my van much good. I finally got to the shop, unloaded the van and pressed the button for the lift and that's when my problems really begin. No, I don't want to talk about it. Try it out yourself. You'll see why. Seriously guys, this is actually written in the instructions and as you can see the shop is more of an arse than the wholesalers as you need to traverse this mess simply just to get paid. Technically compared to some of the other stuff we've played it's actually not that bad of a game but then again I suppose it's nothing like being a van driver is it? Or is it? Number 4 <laughs> this one is so awesome. Okay, so you're Amelie, and this is Amelie Minute, or Amelie Midnight for the English speakers out there. And in this game, your job is that of a receptionist. Now, I know what you're thinking. Lots of filing, appointment keeping, lunch reorganizing, and constant force smiling as you have to greet people into the building before asking them to take a seat. Thankfully, that's not what this game is about, though. Nope. In this game that is set in beautiful Paris, your job is to simply go for a meeting. But there is a catch, obviously, and that is that the meeting is exactly one hour and you need to find an important document before the time limit is up. <laughs> The game then sort of turned into a bit of a boring exploration type, I suppose, point and click game with a time limit. As you look around 29 levels and 224 offices of your workplace in order to find those bloody documents that you lost. Surprisingly, the game actually did quite well in France. And when you start to look a little bit further into this game's history, you find that it's actually a bit of a jokey sort of meme like vibe online with certain groups, with fan art and no doubt hilarious comic strips being made joking about the game. I suppose you could say it's sort of like how desert buses for us English speaking folk. Ah, perhaps Le Nerd should video and Colette did a video on it or something. Who knows? Number three. Yes, fans of classic home computer gaming knew that this one was going to rear its ugly head. Seriously guys, if you haven't seen Kim Justice's video on this one, be sure to queue it up after this. And for those that don't know, brace yourself. 
Right. So, Super Trolley, after looking at the front cover, looks like it's going to be a fun 80s-like arcade game involving plenty of foodstuffs, right? Wrong. There is absolutely nothing super about Super Trolley. You are a shelf stacker in a standard black and white supermarket, and just like the majority of the other games on this list, you would actually rather stack shelves than play a game where you stack shelves. You look dead inside, everyone is moody, you walk slowly, and well, you stack shelves. Normally in games like this, it's sort of a fun gimmick sort of thing where you need to stack before the customer complains, arcadey mechanic. But no, in this, you slowly do your job and you slowly do it again, trying not to wind up the old ladies who slowly walk around the shop. And sadly, as a lot of you know, the absolute bore that is Super Trolley, the utter questionable idea to make a game that feels so eerily dead inside, is at the end of our story. And again, I highly suggest you go and watch out Kim's review on the game for the full story, but the long and short of it is, this game was designed by the mind of a young child who went onto a British TV show called Jim Will Fix It, and they got this guy, that's Jimmy Savile, to help him do just that. Yes, Jimmy Savile. Probably the UK's most evil personality, hugely popular during his lifetime, constantly doing charity work and appealing on every single show imaginable. But during his death, the truth of his extreme paedophile lifestyle came out and has never stopped getting more and more disturbing the more you hear about it. And with that, Super Trolley, one of the most deftly eerie and boring games ever created, simply would have not happened if it wasn't for the young boy going to the UK's biggest paedophile to get it done. Yeah, let's just move on. Number 2 New generation software to the rescue here as Trash Man, a game where you literally pick up trash cans, is here to fulfill all your trash can cleaning disposal desires. Thankfully, even though the idea of this one is obviously boring, I can't deny this one actually isn't too bad. Yes, the idea is boring, and I suppose after playing it for a while it can become boring, but come on, Trash Man, how could I not add this to the list? Situations vacant, trash man required, must be alert, nimble footed and able to hold his drink. So you get yourself a top down view of picking up and emptying rubbish of course, you need to do it quickly so you can keep up with your trash van, you get tips by speaking to the people that pop out of the houses, you gotta dodge cars making it similar to Frogger in a sense and there's the occasional dog you gotta dodge too. All things considered, it's really, really not that bad. Yeah, I'm going to take the boring label off this one because as boring as I remember it to be, I can't deny it. There is a simplistic charm to this one and I probably spent longer replaying it for this video than any other game on the list. Good day's work there, trash man. Tomorrow we've another street for you. Let's see how you fare on that one. That's literally it, guys. Thankfully, with the game being as big as it was, a sequel called Travel with Trash Man was released shortly after, where you take your trash picking up abilities around the world, and whilst you're there, why not put up your feet and try and calm your nerves after listening to me, a British chap, constantly refer to this guy as a trash man. <laughs> Triggered much? Number one. Imagine the perfect video store. It would have a great selection, right? Right! Over 10,000 videos. Three evening rentals, so no rush, no hassle. Fast checkout. 24-hour quick drop return. Open late every night. Well, the perfect video store... Welcome to Blockbuster Video! ...is popping up all over the country. There's one near you. Wow, what a difference. Okay, so I have broken the rules a few times. I know not every game here is boring, and most definitely not every job is boring either. Perhaps it was all just there, you know, as a catchy clickbait title for a video. Who knows? Because here in the top spot is yet another job that actually is pretty awesome if you ask me back in the 90s. You know, Dan, do you want to run your own video shop similar, I suppose, to Blockbuster? 
heck I would have jumped at the chance. And with that in mind, thank God I didn't play this incredibly basic and easily the most boring game off of our entire list. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Video Salesman. Okay, so how many players? Uh, one, enter to play. Week one, Salesman one, cash in hand a thousand, local and national news. This is World Cup week. How many recorders would you like? Yeah, we'll do two. How much are you going to charge? Oh, no, 250. I lost that. Okay, no money there. Local and national news. It's getting near Christmas. Uh, how many recorders will I have? Uh, I'll go for two again. Uh, near Christmas, I don't know, 270. Yeah, excellent, awesome. That's cool. Okay, local and national news. ETs have been released officially. How many do I want? Yeah, I'll have three. Oh, let's charge 300. Yeah, go on. Oh, we're good. Why not? Hey there guys, thanks for checking out the video. I want to give a big special shout out to all of my Patreons, of course. But first, if you want to check the game that's playing right here, then there'll be a PlayAsia affiliate link that does help me out considerably. Please consider buying your games through that affiliate link. Anyway, back to those Patreons. And an extra big shout out goes to that retro video gamer, Gary Pinkett, Mantis, Ryan Burford, Andrew Dalton, Jonathan Haywood, Tomek Grabowski, Christopher Turnbull, Brent Craft, Ben Jackson, Phil Lowlands, Mr. Vestek, Rob but done lefty intrigued gaming abby morris tim labonte asobi quang dx tim lund genovi hanan as pixels limited aka samuel victor red the beard comrade constantine pretendo 64 creamy elephant james loveridge casey garner blitz hedgy savage gaming show Gemma, mr t shirt so right away monster finger games creators of alien scumbag mike h fell looser soft tail ye old hamburger gregory arden bu rides ronnie method sswb solox captor jeremy rodriguez nick pollard bram perez marcus chemo cut tindall June, the Geeky Dad, Richard Carter, aka Fantastic Dizzy, Todd Paul Float, G, and of course, Petty Mew. If you want to get your name shouted out, come and get your name shown. Come and see what I'm working on and get loads of exclusive stuff that these people always seem to get that you don't. Then, of course, please click the link that you see on the screen. Don't forget to subscribe, give the video a thumbs up, a thumbs down. All of you people that are sharing it on social media and places like Reddit, then, of course, thank you to you too. Um, please continue doing that. But anyway, that's enough from me. This is DJ Slope signing out and hopefully I'll see you all next time.